About a year and a half ago, I made my first review of a TV show. These redesigns caused quite the stir in the Sonic community back in 2014, but I actually quite like them. Don't, don't st stop playing it, please. Really cool. Safe to say I could use some work. First, let's go over some history of how the show came to be. Starting with the 2014 Wii U game, Sonic Boom, Rise of Lyric. The story about how Sonic Boom came to be is honestly quite sad. The up and coming studio Big Red Button are tasked with reinventing the entire Sonic franchise for a separate series, with a new world, new tone, and new designs. Shouldn't be too hard, right? I mean, Big Red Button had staff who previously worked at Naughty Dog, this should be no problem. Oh. Long story short, Sega signed a deal with Nintendo, forcing them to put it on a console that the game couldn't handle. Had an extremely tight release date that wasn't changed to accommodate for the console change. People were overworked, had to quit, they were still hiring staff to work on this game months before it released. In the end, the game came out and nearly killed the entire franchise. For a second time. I'm gonna spare you the details on how this game is just so unbelievably awful, it's one of the worst games ever. Because, well first of all, it's not. And second of all, I don't think it's entirely fair to bash on these people who tried their damn best to make a game that was just way too ambitious for the time and resources they were given. But something else happened during the development of the game. Sega and French animation studio We Do Productions partnered up to make a CG Sonic cartoon based on the Sonic Boom brand. This created a major shift in the game's development, with Big Red Button having to take this half-finished game and somehow find a way to have it set up a TV show. And since this TV show was a comedy aimed at boys aged 7 to 11, they had to change what looked like a pretty serious origin story into a goofy adventure where Sonic and friends feel the need to open their mouths every 3.4 seconds. You guys must have really pissed him off! Okay, maybe that's a bad example. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I'm pretty sure it's a bad thing. But while everybody was so focused on ranting about the games, there was an amazing Sonic Boom product that got overshadowed. That of course being... the comic. These are honestly really funny and charming, you should check them out if you get the chance. Oh yeah, and the TV show too, I suppose. There was a lot of hype around the show before it aired. Hype that quickly faded after its release. Not because it was bad, more so just because it wasn't anything really to write home about. Sonic Boom is a comedy show starring the titular Sonic the Hedgehog, who along with his friends Tails, Knuckles, Amy, and new character Styx, foil the weekly plots of the evil scientist Dr. Eggman, who aims to take over their unnamed village and turn it into a theme park. And the formula didn't really stray away from that for the most part. Season 1 of the show was really popular, for the first few episodes at least, but then plummeted after its already terrible time slot got even worse and non-existent promotion. And it's a shame because season 1 was pretty decent for the most part. It's clear for the first half the writers were trying to get their footing with how these characters should act. Oh, in the sand. Go and I'm with showrunner Bill Freeberger stating the characters weren't really set in stone and could mold into whatever the story needed them to do. It seems like it took a bit for them to know when things went too far. More tea, Mrs. Rockbottom? Don't mind if I do, Mr. Boulder. Overall, the episodes were pretty hit or miss. Most of the charm from it came from the surprise of seeing Sonic characters in such a silly setting. It's weird to think about nowadays, but before 2014, they never really tried to do many comedic things with Sonic. Well, at least things that weren't either fucking insane. Even you can learn something from a slob. Or... <laughs> Baldy nose hair! Ugh. I think many of the episodes fell flat due to the pacing. Things were a lot slower with most of the scenes just being characters standing around talking. And when they did decide to be more action-packed, it was just... Sonic spin dashes a robot. Knuckles punches a robot. Yumi hits a robot with her hammer. Teals. Not to mention that most of the times episodes would never really have a solid conclusion, and would just fade to black the second the conflict is resolved. There were hints of an amazing show though. It really thrived off character interactions. Eggman never showed, and you know why? He wasn't invited to the tea party? No. And I really hoped that eventually I could reach that potential. Well, shortly after season 1 started, the show was picked up for a second season. I wonder how long it took for Cartoon Network to realise how bad of an idea that was. Sadly though, like all their unsuccessful shows, it was tossed aside to die on Boomerang after only the second episode of season 2, where it faced a brutal death. Which is such a shame because season 2 was everything I could have ever wanted from this show and more. First off, let's talk about the animation. I cannot describe how jarring it was to go from this, to this, and then to this. This season right off the bat sets you up for some amazing animation. The lighting looks great, everything is so saturated compared to the extremely dull look of season 1, but then about 10 episodes in it gets bad. Like, really bad. I don't know whether it was due to a lack of money or a lack of time, but my bet is on the latter, as it seems like they planned out which episodes would be a higher priority than others, with the season premiere and season finale being pretty high priorities, but episodes like Knock Knock Who's Here and 3 Minutes or Less being really unpleasant to look at, with how unfinished the rendering looks. In the episode Eggman's brother then no joke left the frame counter in a scene in the original airing, 
but aside from some absolute looking unfinished, the animation itself had a major boost in quality. In Season 1, characters would really slowly move from one position to another, making it look very stiff, and the expressions... well, there were none. But with Season 2, the animation is so fluid, and characters emote like how you'd expect them to, which gives the characters an even greater sense of... well, character. Especially because of how great a job the new cast, I say new but they've been voicing these characters for the past decade, but you know what I mean, do. Wait a minute, there are multiple Knuckleses in this dimension? That could cause some kind of catastrophic anomaly! I do not want a dimensional explosion in my lab, I just have the floors waxed! Animation like this... I quit heroing and I quit this stupid group! ...doesn't do Roger's amazing performance justice. Animation like this does. <laughs> Everyone does a great job in this. People complain a lot about the new cast, which I can understand. I mean, what's the point in building an audience's connection to a character's voice only to change it out of the blue? Why would they do something like that? And while I don't think any of them, other than Colleen O'Shaughnessy as Teals and Mike Pollock as Eggman, fit particularly well as the modern characters, I do however think they're perfect for their boom counterparts. Speaking of the characters, they've also seen major improvements. For example, Knuckles, who in Season 1 could come off as an oblivious asshole a lot of the time, is much more likeable with him mostly being used for a random joke here and there. A horse walks into a bar, and the bartender says, Hey, no animals in here! And the episodes about him being a lot less focused on him wreaking havoc in the town, or just on random villagers. Although the standout character is without a doubt Eggman, but I'll talk about him in a little bit. Another issue I had with Season 1 was how formulaic it was. It feels like for a lot of the plots they would have this really neat idea but not really do much with it, and every episode would have to shove in some really forced Eggman fight. Like seriously, he has absolutely no plan half the time. He just comes in, throws the same one or two robots at Team Sonic, then leaves. Even the writers knew how predictable it was getting, with them even making jokes about it in the second season. Dr. Eggman's schemes aren't fiscally motivated. I mean, they're barely motivated, period. Haven't you ever seen this show? This old bot again? Why can't you build something new? I'm trying not to go over budget! And thankfully, the absolute plots got a lot more interesting. They're a lot more absurd, with I think the weirdest being one that focused on this small group of incompetent villains starting a bowling team. But I love stuff like that. This season has a lot of interesting stories, such as Eggman opening a hotel, Eggman going back to school, Eggman going on a vacation with his robo family. Do you see where I'm going with this? About halfway through the season, it turns into Eggman boom. And I'm completely fine with that. Eggman is just so damn likeable in this show. Morning, losers! All he wants is a friend, and this entire village villainizes him for no reason. There's literally an episode where Eggman walks into a fast food restaurant, orders something, everyone in the restaurant makes fun of him, and then he gets kicked out. Fuck it, Eggman's the real protagonist of this show. And the Eggman episodes are probably the best of the entire show. Like the one where he starts up a social media website. What shaking girlfriend? Snapping some selfies to your BFFs? That sounds fleek! Where you can see all the funny meta jokes from the show re-uploaded again and again and again. It's pretty sad that all the show is going to be remembered for is the meta jokes. It's not that I don't like them, it's just that sometimes I feel like they can get in the way of things. Like, let's halt the absolute for 30 seconds so we can make a funny fourth wall break. And I do like those jokes, don't get me wrong, I really do. Well, okay, aside from its weird obsession with political humour, but I feel like the show should be remembered for its great jokes that don't rely on being meta to be funny. The humour gives me a lot of Simpsons vibes. And I shall bring you the truth! The truth! Actually, I can't handle the truth. And the show really did end on a high note, with a two-parter about Eggman tricking Shadow into wanting to murder Sonic all because he wanted some footage for his video game. They actually attempted a multiple-parted episode earlier on with the four-part special, Robots from the Sky, which I think were some of the best episodes the show had to offer, with it being written by Bill Freeberger, along with the other two head writers, Alan Denton and Greg Hahn. The finale gave us everything, great jokes, clever callbacks to previous episodes, and it seems like this is where the majority of the animation budget went into because the action is without a doubt the best the show had, ending what I believe to be the best Sonic TV show. It's too bad the Cartoon Network had such little faith in this show. Who knows how successful it could have been? I mean, it got really impressive ratings when it started, especially for the time it was airing at. So imagine how far it could have gotten if it got a decent time slot and some advertising. I myself remember seeing one advert for it when it premiered on Boomerang in the UK, then it aired for about a week then disappeared for good. Although 104 episodes is still a really good run, with it being the longest running Sonic show. But maybe it's a good thing we never got season 3. Bill Freeberger stated on Twitter that if the show were to ever get a third season, he wouldn't be involved in it. And the other head writers seem to have moved on to other projects, so let's just be glad the series ended on a high note, 
and didn't continue in Sonic Bomb. I must be grateful that this show gives the most amazing thing to ever happen in the Sonic series. Jokes about Eggman's dick. What am I supposed to cover with that? Are you making fun of me?